Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yoli. I make videos all about houseplant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learned over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And this weekend, I'm super, super excited because I'm going to another plant swap, which I went to about six months ago now. And oh my goodness, I had the best time. I met the best people. I swapped for the best plants. It was just an amazing day. So I'm gonna show you what I'm bringing to swap. Then I will do a little swap, swap vlog. I will do a little vlog of the swap itself and then I will show you some of the plants that I got. So yes, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. So I'm definitely taking more than what I took to the last plant swap and I kind of feel like I might have gone a little bit overboard. I've taken multiple cuttings of most of the things that I'm going to show you. So I'm just going to show you one of each and then I'm going to attempt to pack it all into this quite small box actually. So I'm not quite sure how that's going to go. But I will start, so I've just kind of got them spread all around me. But the first one I'm bringing is Syngonium Wenslandii, and I've got quite a few cuttings of this. I actually got this plant at the plant swap last time and Although it's lovely, it's just been one that for some reason I haven't really formed a relationship with, so I thought someone else would appreciate it more. So I've got lots of cuttings of that. Most of these are unrooted. I've got I've got a few that are rooted, but most of them are just unrooted and I wrapped up last night. And then I'm taking some Syngonium elbow cuttings. I again was very brutal with this plant. I did a very big chop of it and I would predict I've maybe got about 20 cuttings of this to take, which as I say, I know is a bit OTT. I think last time, I actually can't remember how much I brought last time, but it was nowhere near the amount of this and it's fine. I'm just, I'm hopefully gonna get some really good swaps. And then I am also taking some cuttings of Hoya pubicalix Hawaiian, which is a Hoya that I just absolutely love. It's been so fast growing for me. So again, I've taken quite a few cuttings of this and I'm hoping it's gonna go down well. I just love the splashiness of its leaves. It's just such a beautiful plant. So I'm taking quite a few little aloe vera pups. These are rooted. I divided them from my mother plant a little while ago and they are growing very, very quickly and I don't have space for loads of little aloe veras. So I am bringing some of those. I just think they're so beautiful. I love the variegation on their leaves. It's just absolutely stunning. And then again, bringing lots of Raftophora tetrasperma cuttings. My big mother plant has just, I mean, ridiculously bushed out recently. She's really, really tall, but also she's just filled out to the side and she's getting a little bit crazy. So I thought I would take some cuttings of her. Again, I've got quite a few of these. And then, so in this, in this little box, I haven't actually put these in cling film yet. I do need to do that, but I just took some cuttings of my Poya croniana super silver and they are all currently just stuffed in there and I'm going to stay with my friend Emma tonight who is one of the ones that's organised the plant swap and we're going to do some wrapping up of cuttings and all that sort of stuff then before the actual swap tomorrow so that is on my to-do list and then I've just got a few little I mean very very little wet sticks of Amedrium silver and my mother plant has started to kind of tendril quite a lot and I know I need to get her on a moss pole but in the meantime I was like I'll chop that bit off I'll do some wet sticks and then I'll get her on a pole and hopefully get her growing a little bit fuller I did have more to take, but I, I trod on one last night and and very sadly, it was not savable. I'm gonna try and prop it, but I don't think it's gonna work. So I've got, I think about three of those to take. And then I've got some little Philodendron Brantianum cuttings. Again, these are rooted. They were just in a prop box that I came across. I was hoping to have more for my prop box to take. Not that I really need it because I've got a lot here, but I was hoping to have more to take, but very sadly, one of my propagation boxes rotted, so. I was I was slightly limited on rooted things, but yeah, it's such a beautiful little plant. That's a really nice cutting actually as well. So I am excited about that. And then I've got some Ace Cananthus marmoratus cuttings, which is a lipstick plant, I think I'm right in saying, variegated lipstick plants. And I think this is such a beautiful plant. I've only actually propagated it myself once and I propagated it in water. I kind of feel like it would do better in sphagnum moss, but yeah, it's one that you don't see every day and 
I feel like people will enjoy. And then I've got some Epipremnum skeleton key cuttings. I did actually start chopping this plant up a little bit recently myself because I wanted to propagate the top cutting. As you can see, it hasn't kind of formed that iconic skeleton key shape yet. And I'm hoping that now it's had a bit of a trim and it can kind of focus its energy more on the existing growth the newer growth might eventually start to start to do lovely things for me. So yeah, I've got a few of them that I'm taking. And then this was bold for me. I decided to completely chop up my philodendron Ernestii and I love that plant so, so, so much. I did keep a couple of cuttings back for myself that I had already propagated, but I was fairly brutal with my chopping. So I've got quite a lot of cuttings of this. It's such a beautiful philodendron and Again, I mean, it's not like mega rare or anything, but I just don't see that many people that have it. I don't really see it being sold that often. And I don't know why. I think it's so gorgeous. So yeah, I've got a lot of those, which are actually quite big and bulky. So God, getting everything in the box is going to be is going to be a bit of a mission. I have also got some Skindapsis Moonlight cuttings. Again, I didn't want to take too much off my mother plant because she does grow very slowly, but I took I think three or four cuttings of this one and it's just a really gorgeous plant and again I know it's one that you don't see every day and people might like. I've tried to just do a complete mix of I haven't got anything ultra rare but just common plants that I enjoy and would like to share and then some that are a little bit rarer. But yeah, I know last time some people were bringing insane things to the swap. There was a complete mix, actually. Some people were just kind of bringing pothos cuttings and kind of common philodendrons and then some people were bringing Thai constellations and all sorts. So I'm hoping a varied mix is a good thing. And then this is the only, yeah, that doesn't really count as a full plant. This is the only full plant I'm bringing. I wanted to bring more. I've actually got one here, my Cladium lindenii that I wanted to bring, but I just don't think I'm going to be able to carry all of it on the train. So I'm just going to, just going to take this one. And this is the only one. I don't have any other cuttings of this plant. And it is just one that I've fallen out of love with a little bit, but I can appreciate that it is beautiful and I think somebody else would love it more. So that is going. And then this, as I said, didn't really count as a full plant. I mean, does that count as a full plant? I don't know. I think because there's just one strand of it, I don't really think of it as a full plant. And the name of this one, I always get it wrong. I always want to call it Selenserius warleckii. And I think think it's something different so I'll put the name on the screen but it's it's a beautiful plant I've got my big fuller plants that I absolutely love I accidentally broke this bit off a while ago so I stuck it in soil it's rooted nicely it's given me lots of new growth and yeah I just think it's a cool little jungle cactus and hopefully again somebody will be able to offer it a good home and then I've got loads of Althanthera party time cuttings and I can appreciate that this plant is so beautiful and I thought I'd love it, but to be completely honest, I just haven't been a massive fan of how it grows. I think this is a stunning cutting, but I think unless you kind of continuously chop it back to kind of encourage fuller growth, it gets very leggy. And to me, it just kind of looks like a very pretty indoor weed. And for that reason, I probably wouldn't own this plant again. I mean, never say never, but I probably wouldn't own it again. But all of these are rooted. I just propagated them in water and... Oh my goodness, they took so quickly. Like I put them in water and I think about three or four days later, they were already rooting, like really seriously rooting. So now they're all, you can kind of see through the pot, they've all got a really, really great root system on them and they will probably be ready to be potted up. But yeah, I got a lot of them. I think I've got about seven of them. And is that it? I think that's it. There were others as well, as I say, that I was going to bring, but I am going to pack the box first. And if miraculously I do have some space, oh, I've got some alocasia corms as well, but they are currently at the bottom of the box and there's not a lot to see because they're not sprouting or anything like that. I've got some alocasia friedeck corms and some alocasia silver dragon corms. But yeah, right, I am going to attempt to pack the box and get everything organised and then I'm gonna get myself organized, get myself ready, and I'm gonna go. I packed the tallest fragile things upright in cups with sphagnum moss so that even if the box got knocked about a bit on the journey, they'd be fairly secure. I also put the most robust plant cuttings at the bottom and piled the lighter ones on top, which seemed to work fairly well. So to be honest, I really don't think I can fit any more in this box and it actually feels surprisingly heavy as well. So fingers crossed they get there safely. 
This is slightly awkward. <laughs> I thought I was getting weird looks on the train with my box of plants, but oh my goodness, when I saw what some of you guys had brought to the plant swap, honestly, I don't know what people must have thought. Some of you turned up with trolleys, which I just, I thought that was amazing. I finally made it to Emma's, we got super excited together, had some dinner, I helped her prep some stuff for the plant swap, had a snuggle with her gorgeous cat Cleo, and then we got an early night all ready for the next day. I'm back from the plant swap and oh my goodness, it was such a lovely day. Honestly, I mean, to be completely honest, I found it slightly overwhelming at times because there were so many lovely people there that I really wanted to kind of chat to and get to know and talk about plants. And there were also so many plants themselves. And I don't think I actually got round everything to kind of take a proper look at it all because there was so much stuff and there were so many people that I was just a bit like, ah, this is scary, but fun at the same time. It was really fun. But for that reason, I didn't do my swaps in maybe the same way as I did them last time. I didn't kind of approach anyone and say, oh, I really like that. Would you want anything of mine? I kind of just let on the whole people come to me and I did get some swaps, but they were more kind of like, this is what I've got on my table. If you want anything from over there, go and take that and vice versa. And also there were some very kind people there as well that were just giving stuff away for free or gifting stuff, which was really lovely. But for that reason, I haven't kept track of every single swap that I made. I'm just going to show you what I'm coming back with. And thank you to everybody who I got plants from because I love and adore them all so much. And 
I feel very, very, very grateful. And it was also so lovely to meet some of you guys there as well. I knew that some of you were going, but it was, it was so wonderful to meet you in person and have a chat and just... Yeah, it's just so great to meet people in the plant community because they just tend to be the loveliest people in the world. And as I say, it can be quite daunting walking into a big room of people that you don't know, but everybody just made it flow really nicely. And Emma and Lisa as well, who organised and ran the event, they did such a fab job. It was honestly, it was just a great day. And I'm going to stop waffling now and I'm going to show you what I got. To start with, so these are these are not plants themselves, but Soil Ninja were there, who are a fantastic company. I've spoken about them before, but they were giving away some samples of things. So I've got, I'm pretty sure this is a Monstera and Philodendron soil mix of theirs. And I've also got some of their live sphagnum moss, which I've used before, and it is honestly the best stuff. And the interesting thing as well was that Liquid Gold Leaf was also there. And Ian had brought a microscope set up so you could look at things under the microscope and kind of get an idea of kind of what's going on in the soil and all that sort of stuff. And we actually put some of Soil Ninja Sphagnum Moss under the microscope and looked at it. And it was absolutely fascinating because obviously with their live Sphagnum Moss, it isn't treated with any nasty chemicals or anything like that. So you could see lots of little beneficial bugs, like little beneficial, I think they were like beetly things running around on the moss. And I just thought that was so wonderful because so much of the time stuff is treated with loads of nasty things that you would not want for your plants. So yeah, very excited about those. But then the plants themselves, I will start with one that, okay, so I showed you the ones that I was taking to the swap and I know I showed you that I was taking a Raftophora or quite a few Raftophora tetrasperma cuttings. And I've actually come back with one as well. So Emma, good growing, her Raftophora tetrasperma looks very different to mine. Firstly, as you can see, not all of its leaves are fenestrated, but even the ones that have, I'll put a clip in of my big plants so that you can see what it looks like, but it just looks like it's got a completely different structure to it. So we kind of said to each other, should we swap and see if maybe it's just environmental, maybe it's responding differently in your home to mine, or maybe it is just a different form of Raftophora tetrasperma. I don't know, but yeah, I'm really, really intrigued about that. And then again, I don't remember every single thing that I got from every single person. I remember quite a few, but I, for that reason, I'm not gonna say I got this from that person. I know I just said that about Emma, but apart from that, I'm not gonna say it because I don't want anyone to feel like I'm leaving them out. Um, but I got a beautiful, I got a couple, but I got a beautiful philodendron cobra cutting, which is a plant that I've wanted for absolutely ages. And I saw this one and I was just like, it's so gorgeous. And then also so that I can now make a full pot, I did get some others as well. And I think the girl that got these off said that they were unrooted and I think she'd been trying to root them in sphagnum moss and she hadn't had that much luck. So she said, maybe try perlite. So I've put them in moss just for the time being to transport them back here, but... I'm thinking I probably will give perlite a go and get them in the cabinets, keep my fingers crossed because it's such a beautiful plant and I know it is one that is quite slow growing. So the fact that I've got multiple cuttings now hopefully means at some point further down the line, I can get a really nice full plant going. And then also I got some watermelon peperomia cuttings and I got these from the same girl that I got them from last time. They're not rooted at the moment, they're just like that. But the ones that I got from her last time at the plant swap very sadly rotted and didn't make it. So she brought me some more and she was like, there you go. I hope, I hope they do better things for you this time. So fingers crossed, I'm really hoping they do. I love this type of peperomia and it's one that I don't have in my collection. So Again, fingers crossed, fingers crossed for all of them, but I'm hoping that this time I will have more luck with these. And then where to go to next, because I've literally haven't done this in any order. So over here, I've got a philodendron lemon lime, and I've never had this type of philodendron before. I know it's a fairly common one, but I think it's really gorgeous. And again, like the color of it is so different to anything else that I've got. It's so luminous it's almost kind of like a highlighter yellow with green which i really like and i think as well it is it's very well rooted so i'm hoping at some point maybe i could take some more cuttings of that and again get it going as a nice full plant and then i also got some hoya matilde cuttings i never know if it's matilde or matilda but it's a hoya that i don't think I've had before. The person that I got this from was like, I'm pretty sure you have. I feel like I've seen it in one of your videos. And I was like, ooh, have I? And if I did, I don't anymore. So I'm really, really excited about this one. And I think it's little leaves are just so diddy and gorgeous. And they're so splashy as well. Like, look at those 
they're just so gorgeous. So yeah, I think I'm gonna get this rooting in sphagnum moss again. I know I'm running out of room in my cabinet, but I would like to put it in my cabinet because hoys propagate really well in there. So maybe I'll do that. But yeah, I think it's really lovely. And I'm so, I'm just, I've added quite a few more hoyas to my collection from the plant swap and I'm slightly hoya mad at the moment. I've caught, I've caught onto the bug fairly late compared to a lot of people I know, but I just am really obsessed and I can't stop getting them. And I find them really easy to grow, really easy to take care of and really easy to propagate on the whole. So yeah, I am very interested in Hoyas right now. So that one is very exciting. And then another Hoya that I got is one that again, I have had before. This is a Hoya Curtisii and I did get a full plant of this a while back and it didn't do very well. It came, it was really weird. It came potted. Sorry, just wait for that very low plane to go by. Yeah, the other Hoya Curtisii that I got came potted in basically just like pure bark, but not just like bark chunks, like an actual like block of bark. And I found it really hard to keep that hydrated. I know it is an epiphytic plant. And so technically that probably is a good way of growing it, but it didn't do very well for me. So I, I don't have it anymore, but now I do again. So that is very exciting. And then I got some Pothos Enjoy cuttings as well, because I got a few from Emma when we did our video plant swap. And although I really love it, it's not a very full plant at the moment and it is quite slow growing. So I'm thinking I can pot these all up together and it'll be looking a lot fuller, a lot lovelier. And I just think the variegation on it is just really, really stunning. It doesn't look like a common plant, if that makes sense. It kind of looks quite unusual and rare. So yeah, I'm excited about that. And then this is one that I was very kindly given. This is a Discoria discolor and it's a plant that I've never owned before. And I've been doing a bit of digging in the last 24 hours, kind of looking into this plant and seeing what it does, because I I kind of thought from the texture of its leaves, it was almost quite caladium -y. Like they're very, very thin, but when you look at its growth structure, I'll try and find a picture and put it in so that you can see. It's very, it feels very unpredictable. And it's one that I'm really, really excited about. So. Yeah, I'm super excited to watch it grow and see what it does for me. I will do updates on all of these plants as well because a lot of these I haven't owned before and I I wanna let you know what they're doing and, oh, hello dogs. I think that's all I was gonna say. Train of thought has has gone. Um, But then I also got a, oh, I picked up one that I thought was one and it's actually another. I got some Skindapsis Silvery Anne cuttings that are very, very, very well rooted. And again, I've never had this type of Skindapsis before. I think it looks fairly similar. I mean, in terms of its leaf size and its growth structure, it looks fairly similar to the Argoreus, but it's got a lot more silvery splashes and its leaves are slightly lighter as well. So I'm really happy with that. And I'm gonna get it going in a hanging pot and have it trailing down and looking really beautiful. And the one that I thought I picked up just then is another Skindapsis. And it's a, I think it's just a Skindapsis Treby. And I do already have this plant. I took a lot of cuttings of my big plant with the plan of bringing them to the plant swap. In the end, I couldn't actually fit them in my box because my box was so, so, so full. But I am trying to kind of build up my more mature cuttings of that plant to hopefully get, again, I know I'm saying it a lot, but a really nice full plant going because mine's not doing amazingly at the moment. And I saw this one and... Look at the size of that leaf. It must be one of the biggest Skindapsis leaves I think I've ever seen. And it just blew my mind and I was like, I have to have it. So yeah, hopefully at some point soon I'll have a really lovely, really full plant. And these next ones I am really intrigued about. They're little bulbs and the name is, I had to write it down, Soromassum venusum. And they're commonly known as voodoo lilies. And again, if I can find a picture, I'll put it in because Oh my goodness, they look absolutely crazy. And I've never seen anything like it before, but I'm really intrigued to grow these and see how they do. I might actually get them started. I'm not sure if they're seasonal or if there's a best time of year to plant them. So if any of you guys know, do let me know in the comments. But if not, I'll do some research and I will figure it out and maybe get them going quite soon. I don't know if this is a good time to do it. But yeah, I just love getting weird little things like this at plant swaps because so often it is just plant cuttings. And if you get seeds or bulbs or berries or anything like that, I just, I really like that because it's more, it's it feels more interactive. I know that's a weird way of putting it, but yeah, I'm really excited about them. And then I got a begonia and I'm pretty sure, please correct me if I'm wrong, because I am not the best with um, begonia names. I only currently have one begonia in my collection. 
but I think this is a begonia snow cap and I saw it and I was like oh that's gorgeous because it looks very similar to my Alvo Picta which is the one that I currently have and I really really love but as you can tell its new growth seems to come in very pinky and the back of its leaves as well have got much more of a kind of pinky reddish tinge to it but I, I, I think on the whole from what I've heard these types of begonia the kind of like spotty viney begonias tend to be a little bit easier and it's not that I've really struggled with begonias I think I just haven't I don't know they, I don't really get them I don't I know there's like a whole craze and people love begonias but I've never really caught the bug with them. As I say, I do really like the one that I've got, so I'm hoping I'm gonna love this one just as much. And then I also got this Peperomia clusii folia jelly. I think that is the way, the way that you say it. Is that the way that you say it? I don't know. Um, but that's what I wrote down. Clusii folia jelly cutting. And I just absolutely love Peperomia that are not kind of conventionally Peperomia-ish, if that makes any sense at all. Like, I love my sarcophyla that looks really kind of weird and robust and anthurium-y and I again haven't had this type of peperomia before. Wow, why am I struggling to speak so much? <laughs> I haven't <laughs> I haven't had this <laughs> oh my god. I haven't had this type of peperomia before and I'm really excited about it because again I was doing some googling on all of the plants that I haven't owned before and this one looks beautiful. I think its colouring is really gorgeous. It's kind of a very I don't know like tealy sagey green but then it's got these beautiful pink outlines and I know I'm not usually one for colourful plants but this this is perfect for me this is a nice a nice little splash of colour without it being too overwhelming so yes I'm very excited about this one. Oh god I've got the proper giggles I don't know why <laughs> And then I've got three more Hoyas here that I am really, really, really excited about. The first one's one that I've wanted for absolutely ages. It's a Hoya, a variegated Hoya macrophylla, and it's just so gorgeous. I love its leaves. I've, as I say, wanted this plant for absolutely ages. The amount of times I've gone on Etsy and put cuttings of this in my basket and haven't actually done it, I haven't actually placed the order. I saw this and I was like, yes, that is my plant. That is my plant. So I'm super excited to watch this one grow. Again, I think I will try and be getting, trying to be getting, trying to get, I don't know what's happening today, trying to get all of my Hoyas into my cabinet because as I've already said once in this video, they do do really well in there. So that's the plan for that one. And then this one I just had to get. I mean, I loved it anyway, but I know a lot of you guys have said that my Sarawak, my big Hoya Sarawak is actually a latifolia and I have just been a little bit confused. And so this is supposedly a Hoya latifolia and I think it looks really, really different. I mean, personally, unless this isn't a true latifolia, I really don't know. But I mean, it's it's gorgeous. I just love the shape of those leaves. Like, look at the little points on its tips. They're like little raindrops. They're just absolutely beautiful. And yeah, it's got such gorgeous, shiny, robust, waxy leaves. And I mean, I'm just absolutely over the moon with this. I love weird Hoyas anyway. And I know this one isn't that weird, but it's very different to any of my other Hoyas. I'm super excited to see what it does for me. I know I'm saying I'm super excited about all of these. And that's because I am, but I can't wait to see what this one does. Again, whack it in the cabinet, hope for the best, and I will let you know how it gets on. And then this Hoya is special. This is one that really, I mean, it got me very excited. I actually had to take it out on the train on the way home to look at it again. This is a Hoya Globulosa Welsh Mountain Zoo. Again, I will put all the names on the screen. I think that's right. Ah, it says it on the back. Hoya Globulosa WMZ, Welsh Mountain Zoo but it is just absolutely beautiful. And the lovely woman that I got this from sent me a photo of the mother plant as well. And the mother plant looks absolutely out of this world insane. So if this gets to that stage at some point, I'm I'm gonna be so, so, so happy. But besides the fact, the camera doesn't do it justice, but besides the fact it's got that gorgeous dark veination and just really unique, beautiful foliage, it's also so soft. And usually with Hoya tendrils as well, like if you compare, that tendril to that one, you can kind of see the difference. This one's a bit more twiggy, and in my experience, that's what pretty much all of my Hoya tendrils have been like. This one is just so thick and fluffy, and I don't think the camera's gonna properly pick it up, but it is just so soft. And it's a Hoya that is unlike any of my others. It's, I mean, at the moment, I'm kind of getting slightly similar vibes to the Callistophyla or something like that. But as I say, the mother plants, which again, I'll put a picture in of that she sent me, looks amazing. And 
yeah, I'm I'm really, really, really chuffed with it. And then the last plant that I got is actually already in my cabinet, so I'll have to get it out and show you, but it had maybe a slightly more rocky journey than the rest of the plants, because all of the others fit in my box that I took to come home. This one's slightly bigger and it couldn't fit in the box, so it kind of has been in my bag, in my pocket, in my hand, on top of the box. So as soon as I got back, I was like, right, get it in moss, get it in the cabinet and try and get it in the best possible conditions. So I will grab it and I will show you it. I am still completely in awe of this plant, but this is a philodendron Jose Bueno. And again, it's one that I've wanted for such a long time. I got it from one of you guys, thank you very much. And the lovely woman that I did get it from, we also found out we're pretty much neighbors. She lives very close to me. We went to the same college. It's such a small world, but yeah, that was really fun and lovely to make these connections. But yes, I have wanted a Jose Bueno for such a long time and I saw this one and I literally said to her, I was like, anything you want on my table, just take it because this is just stunning. And although it's not actually kind of properly rooted, it's got some insane aerial roots on it. So I'm really hoping it should take quite quickly. And actually I was really worried about, as you can see, it's kind of going off to the side a bit, but I was really worried about bringing this one home because it was not an easy one to transport, especially as I say, with the big box and the big bag that I already had. But somehow I think I've managed to get away with it without damaging the main leaf at all, which I'm really, really, really happy about. I just, oh, it's really hard to kind of, oh, it's dripping. I just watered the moss and now it's going all over the floor. Um, I might need to put a clip in of it, but I think you can kind of, I think you can kind of gauge it. I just think it's absolutely stunning. And those little speckly patches of variegation are just so beautiful. And I mean, the size of it, look at the size of it. So yeah, I'm absolutely, absolutely chuffed with that. And just feel very lucky to have all these lovely new plants. And I've seen that some of you lot have got some amazing swaps as well. I've been following it all on Instagram. I will put the page another plant swap just here and in the description box below if anybody wants to be kept up to date with the future plant swaps that are being held. But there's just such a lovely, there was such a lovely mixture of really rare things and really common things. And I feel like I got a really nice mix of both. And I'm so, so incredibly happy with everything that I got. But on top of that, I also won a prize in the raffle and I never win anything. Like literally, I think last year I bought maybe about 20 tickets and I won nothing. And there were some amazing prizes this year. Oh my goodness, there were some amazing prizes. But I won, uh, and this is made by Jungle Floor as well, Rosie at Jungle Floor, who I will link there because she does have a shop. But firstly, I won this lovely Anthurium Crystallinum cushion that she handmade and I think it's so beautiful, it's so soft, and it's just really, really lovely. And then also, and I'm excited about this, she also made a potting mat, and my potting mat is probably a little bit outdated. I use it for my watering, and it's always a little bit messy. And I think this is gonna be my fancy potting mat. I'll, I'll unfurl it, and I will show you it, because if you guys watch my videos, you will know that I'm not the neatest person. I never really do repots and keep things clean. But if I'm feeling like I want to be fancy and I want to just kind of maybe do some propagating or anything like that, I've got this gorgeous one and it's got little zebras and leaves all over it and it's just so, so, so pretty. So I'm really excited about that. And then finally as well, like they did last year, they also put together amazing goodie bags. And so I've got a lovely bag that I will be able to carry all of my planty things in, which had, it had loads of voucher codes in it. Hang on, I have I haven't actually had a proper look in here. Yeah, it's got loads of voucher codes. It's got soil ninja voucher codes, liquid gold leaf voucher codes. Oh, wow, I've also just seen there's a 50% off code in here for planted in shop. Uh, and there were also little trellises as well that I can put Hoyas around and stuff like that, which is from Lush Plants UK. Some little pots, a sticker that says another plant swap on it and also a fridge magnet that says another plant swapper and they did also oh my goodness Lisa made the most delicious truffles as well but it goes without saying they are no longer in the bag they were they were in my stomach before the plant swap had even begun because they were really yummy but yeah it was it was just such a fantastic day and it was it was a lot of fun I can't wait for the next one as I say I'll put the details for another another plant swap in the description box below and if you guys can come to it, then it would be lovely again to meet some of you there. 
but yeah i'm i'm super super happy with everything and and my phone just ran out of storage so i just had to clear it but i just before i wrap this video up i've just realized i forgot to show you one i also got this beautiful philodendron silver sword cutting and I love the philodendron silver sword more than anything in the world. I've banged on about it before. I have got a teeny weeny one currently at the bottom of my cabinet there, but it's a fairly slow grower in my experience and I've dreamed of it getting to this stage at some point. So I'm thinking, I'm not actually sure if this is rooted or not, but when it is ready to be potted, I will probably pot them together and again, get a lovely full plant going. But yeah, those are, those are all the things that I got. I'm so happy with them and yeah, it was just wonderful. But yeah, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day, and I will see you in the next video.